Hello, and welcome. I'm Zyner, and here we are once again playing Resonant Rise. And, uh, I got a... Hey, it's sort of a makeshift program going on. It's not the finished version, so I'm not really gonna throw it at you, but, uh... If I right-click on that, sometimes it damages me when I'm going down. Built, a uh, catwalk and a ladder, uh, protector out of microblocks. Partly because I was falling off the ladder a decent bit. And my goal here is to make one program that I can easily configure to function at any floor. This was part of my original plan, but I got rid of it. Uh, on every floor in the same exact spot, I'm going to have what I'm going to call the routing room. Where any cables that need to come from other floors are going to come down through this floor. Now... I'm obviously probably going to need to make it bigger or something. I'll probably make it wider so I can manage the cables a little bit better. But, uh, got, I dug out a room here. This is going to be processing. It is storming in my Minecraft right now. And I've got the incubation rooms I had before still. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It kind of looks like oil, but I'm afraid to put it into something else in case it isn't. Actually, you know what? Let's just grab you. And, of course, the wall, like things do. Cool thing about the Ender I.O. is on certain things, like the Atomic Disassembler, it does not care. It doesn't care who you are or what you are. Fortron? What? Is... but is Fortron? I realize Fortron is from this, but... How do you... What? I am deeply confused right now. Are you telling me that I found Fortron just chilling somewhere in the world? Oh well, I'll come back and deal with that later. Well, I don't have any fish going at the moment. And I built a little room over here. This is the smallest size fish tank. In reality, I am i can't have these corners here. Which I didn't think about this when I built it. But... That's an easy enough fix. Also, these two right here. Uh, I don't have to fix that, because I just knocked out the ceiling. And I'm just going to fix these two, and then I'll come back and get the others later. So that's basically how it is. The corners have to be like dirt, sand, or air. And the insides have to be a solid block or glass. So I did get, well, first of all, I want to make some things. The Safari Net, which is made from a gas tier, an ender pearl. Well, four ender pearls. So I'll just clear that one out. Uh, oh. Hey, did I... Anyhow. Auto spawner, which is made with a thermal expansion machine frame, a redstone reception coil, two emeralds, two magma cream, another wart, and two plastic. Uh, now, I want to get my processing stuff going. And the easiest way to handle input and output for multiple machines, especially if using mechanism machines, which only support one thing from a given direction, the uh, Steve's factory is just really, really good at it. So, for example, oh, apparently I countered improperly. But, if we look inside of my, well, technically it's an ME network, there is a few machines. I have an energized smelter, which I got out of the uh, Triton dungeon. It's obviously just a smelter. Uh, I'm probably going to move to using the sag mill here. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm probably going to be doing a lot of my processing using uh, mariculture. Where did I leave my crucible? That is the question. Did I put it in here? No. Well, I am organized. I have no idea where my machine is. 
Well, I probably stuffed it in my mariculture box. Yeah, I definitely did. Grab the one that's nearly empty already, and the other one. Grab all these. I really should upgrade the uh, the heating upgrades at some point. I'm not quite sure why my fluid conduits are in there, but... Uh, as you can see, I've been using the ladder more than the elevator because I'm a bit impatient. But what I want to know... And I've got two more... Somewhere. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. I'm curious to know if Steve's factory manager can actually handle the ingot casters and the crucible furnace because it has the ability to move liquids and I'm curious as to whether or not it can actually move the liquids out of these it might not support these as proper tanks for all I know this might actually crash me but it's for science so what I should also be able to do say oh, I should have brought a chest I'm gonna need to upgrade the computers to tier 2 yeah, which is part of the reason why I have this but I need tier 2 computers in order to put in the tier 2 graphics card I need the tier 2 graphics card to get a higher what am I doing? I don't need... I need a chest. Just the chest. Uh, I want to be able to open it, but... I haven't really provided myself a way to do that. Well... Okay, let's try this, and then I'll put the chest here, and I still haven't really left myself in much of a working position. Move. Blood lamp. Go there. Now, I think I should probably get another chest. I'm going to get one of my iron chests, because, well, the way the Steve's factory manager inventory, or the, uh, the configurator works... It's probably best if I have two chests that look different. How's your heat doing? 286, okay. So, it's pretty simple. Create a trigger, an input, and an output, and then you can just kind of drag them around. So in this case, when I'm holding shift, something I learned from Akko, if you hold shift, it will snap things to a grid. So I'm going to set this one up, I'm just going to click the T, put it a name, and I'm going to call this one Fluids, even though it's technically Molten Metals, but I mean, I could be putting pretty much anything through it. Now, I want my source block to be the Crucible Furnace. Oh, actually, I'm making a mistake already. There's two specific ones, the Fluid Input and the Fluid Output. Oh, they do show up as tanks, so this should work. It uh, shouldn't really matter where I'm pulling it from. And I'll blacklist whatever I don't need. Uh, define... Run a shared command once. I'm hoping this works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Oh, I didn't choose a direction. Uh, up. Now, if I use the... Oh, what am I doing here? Not the trigger. I'm not even going to rename this one at this point. So if I use... This is the input chest. So I'll select down because why not? Anything that I want into the input chest... I might have to get a little bit... Uh, crazy with this one, but hopefully not. Now I wish to input it into... I don't know. 
the bottom of that. And I'll just type or. Now the glorious part about the way this mod works is I can also choose, say, this copper. And you might be thinking, that's not the right copper. Cool enough, I can actually do or dictionary support. So I don't even need to really think about what, what I'm doing here. I mean, obviously I do need to a little bit. Not really enough to matter. So rutile. Gonna need that. Should really only be one of that. Uh, bauxite is... It turns into aluminum. So I need to do that one. Let's see if I can't find tin. I probably won't be getting any nether ores anytime soon, so I don't really need to set those up. Where's the tin? Tin ore. And lead. There we go. Now, with any luck, if I do this and this, and that and that, now, theoretically, I could probably run all of these off of one trigger, but, eh. Now, what I do want to do is, in this case, I want to run the command once per target, and I'll pull it from down, and pull everything, and I will input them into the iron chest. Uh, up, because why not? And that should be good. How are you doing? Almost a thousand degrees? Let's check what ores I have chilling in here. There's some bauxite. Now, different ores have different temperature requirements. So, I know that copper, for example, is, I believe, 1,085, whereas something like lead might be higher. I don't want to run osmium through this yet, because I don't know if the actual configs are fixed to make it so they work better, or if they patch that the mod author of Mariculture said went through to resolve issues. But that's 1,085. That's 328. I could do that pretty quick. That's 1,538, 962, 660. So I can take all the heating upgrades. They just make it heat faster. Then I'll use the hyperkinetic. And I really should have the ore dictionary over here. Now you can see I'm getting some extra outputs. The only unfortunate part about that is I'm going to have to make two commands in order to handle them. Well, maybe not. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, as you can see, we're getting aluminum out over here, which is very good. Now, the cables themselves don't actually store anything, which means that as long as this works right, and I don't remember how much aluminum I put in there, I think it was 16 ore? As long as I get the 32 out this side. Cool. Now, it seems like things are actually cooking out of here pretty quickly. Uh, let's put this and this in here. Er, we're not high enough for the iron to melt. Oh, right, I need to do something about the extra output. So, let's make us a trigger, an input, an output. The extra output is preventing this from moving them. So what I want to do is I want to move everything in the extra output slot into a different inventory. In this case, I'm going to move it to that chest because 
some of them can actually be reprocessed. Now I'm gonna hope this is smart enough to not accept anything it can't use actively. Well that's not good. Right. Now, the unfortunate part is, it seems to have pulled that out. I know some of these things are actually extra outputs from some of the things I've processed. So I'm going to make these ones go into... Actually, I'll make them go in... Oh, no, that's the input one. I don't want to screw with the input. I want these to go into silver because these ones I know for a fact won't be reprocessed. Here we go, that looks better. It's still not hot enough for the iron, but it'll get there. Now... The reason why I'm using three ingot casters is because I had this issue where not even two was enough to keep up with the uh, liquid outflow of three advanced hyperkinetic upgrades. So this should... It seems like it's working pretty well. The only downside is I need my ore dictionary. No, that's a mob spawner. Where did I leave my ore dictionary? Seriously. Oh, I think it's in my table, isn't it? Yeah. So the cool thing about the ore dictionary is it will auto output. So in this case, uh, let me get my dolly. I'm going to move this down one. I'm going to move that to right there. As you can see, I now still have my information. And I'm going to reprogram the output on this to be the OR dictionary, the auto dictionary, and that as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run everything through here real quick to get them converted to what I want them to be. And now I have my proper ingots. I've been using the factorization lead because it's got the solid border like the others. Like this one isn't so much, but it's a different enough color that I leave it like that. Plus, a lot of the ores for aluminum cooking up are actually maricultures. Now, I might actually... I'll put this guy down. No, no, no. Yeah, I'll leave him there. I want to actually drain that out first, although I want this barrel. Still confused as how I have Fortron. And what I'm supposed to do with it. That's really weird. So I'll place those two things there. You know what? Because of the way I have this set up, I'm actually going to put that there. So I have to run less cable. I mean, I made a ton of it anyhow. But Blood lamp. Why are you always in the way? Sit in the middle of the floor where you can't really be in the way. So now what I'm going to do here... Liquid input, liquid output... I just accidentally made two triggers. Eh, I'll put it there. Who knows? I might need it later. So, in this case, I'm going to do that and that. I'm going to pull from the bottom, and I'm going to blacklist. See, here's where I've made a small mistake, but not small enough that it means anything, because it wasn't actually a mistake. The fact that I moved that was a good thing. So what I want to do is the one that's farther away in this case, so this one's 11 cables away. I want to select him, target up. And I shouldn't need to change anything related to the whitelist. Now, with any luck, as you can see, that's full now. Not quite sure where it pulled it from. It must have been that, because that was full. 
So now I've got a bunch of oil running this, and this should be pretty much a self-contained system. I'll just need to get some, uh, yeah, that's, that's another one of the issues. I, I didn't mean to spend quite as much time on processing this time around, but this is one of those things that it's really good to get out of the way. Uh, up, because I can. Now, hopefully if I type unknown, don't, don't do that to me. Oh, good. Well, dust? Let's see if I can't find the Mariculture section of the dust listing. Hmm. Aha! Unknown silvery, unknown lead, unknown tinic, unknown copperous, unknown golden, unknown ironic, unknown manganish. So, if I were to connect these, and I forgot to set an output chest, I want these to go back into this one because they'll need to get reprocessed. And now. Did it already. Shouldn't you have been pulled back into the system by now? What did I screw up here? Oh, it's because I set the... Did I set the inputs? Yeah. Okay, let's just do this. Anything in that chest will be pulled in. Anything not in that chest won't be pulled in. No? Hello? You gonna... Pull things in? Or... Just gonna leave that in there. Input from chest. Output into crucible furnace. Hello? Nothing in your blacklist. Why are you not moving the dust? Huh. Oh, that's why. Okay. Uh. Huh. I didn't want to have to make a second crucible furnace for this, but I might have to. Hmm. Crap. Hmm. Okay. Uh. I'm unfortunately. Oop. Oh going to have to make a slight alteration to the setup. And by that, I mean I need to set this up so this will auto-output into it. So, auto-eject items. Put that in there. Now this is going to have broken two of these, which is fine. Now, any secondary output should get ejected into the chest. Uh, here's some iron. It's probably not enough iron to actually get an output. I don't know if there's any more floating around in my walls. There's all kinds of stuff just in my walls right now that I haven't done anything about. Uh, it should be... I mean, 
majority of the iron floating around. So I have 25. Let's go over here and see how this goes. Pulls it out. Throws it in here. Now, this isn't quite as efficient as it could be because you can actually do that and process twice as much at a time, which is why my things weren't keeping up. But it shouldn't be an issue. Now it should try running them one at a time, so it also shouldn't really split anything except for in full ingots. And it seems to be keeping up quite readily, so I'm pleased with this. Nice. Now I've got the extra output dusts in here. They're going to get pulled into the system. Cool. And because these slots can be pulled from, the extra outputs that I don't want in there should end up in here. We got a piece of silicon from the, uh, the ironic dust. Nice. Nice. Everything's going as planned. Now, I've made a little bit of work going on down here. Of ex This I had before. Uh, however, I've cut out the below floors. Except for... I didn't cut out the access to this one. There we go. And I'll just put these two blocks here. Oh. Well, that access needs to be there anyhow. But, uh... There we go. I need one here as well. This is obviously going to be where the next floor goes. I'm going to make my, uh... Before I release the actual code, because I'm probably going to paste bin it and then put it in the description of the video... Not of this video, but of the video where I finally get it fixed. I'm going to make this, the uh, the elevator system, modular. So, there will be a few config options at the top of the program that you'll edit based on computer and based on your needs. And then it should just run without issue, hopefully. With that said, this might be a shorter episode, but I did manage to basically get the automatic handling of processing set up. The only thing I would need to do is grab my digital miner. Because of that thing's height, oh, I can't get out of here now. I could actually turn him. You don't need to be on. And I can tell it to just mine whatever I want. So, if I tell it I want iron, uh, you know what, this wall is currently unimportant. Now, we should start getting iron in the chest, which means it's now in here. That dust is going to actually sit in there till it gets processed. But it will eventually get processed, and it gives me a 16% chance of silicon. Which, honestly, getting free silicon is useful. Because I'll be able to use it on, well, making electrical steel or redstone alloy, which I'm going to want redstone alloy at some point, I'm sure. And I'm hoping that, I don't think it will. I'm pretty sure the Ender I.O. cables don't count as bundled cable for the purposes of outputting to them with certain machines. But, as you can see, I've been keeping my resonant energy cell that I got out of that one chest filled and been using it to power the miner. It's not running at full speed. You actually can't see that. I've only got six in it, but six does the job. And, it, I mean, obviously this isn't keeping up too well. Now, if I pull this out, put that in there, fortunately, I'm not sure if it's actually coming in quick enough to, eh, maybe. Worst case scenario, that will fill that up. I'm actually, I cut through a decent bit of iron, not a whole lot with these, but I am going to need to make more. And I still need to 
Well, it's going to be really expensive, but every single ladder I'm going to fill in with an iron block. That's going to be a bit painful on the iron supplies. But uh, as you can see, I was making more redneck cables so I could finish the elevator shaft. Now, I want to... Uh, autonomous. Autono. Should probably get me there. Yeah, it did. So if I request ten and pistons, ten. No, I'm missing cobblestone. How does this happen? So yeah, it happens. It doesn't support or dictionary. It's horrible. Okay. I uh, should have ten chests. Quest the tin. Throw these things back in here. And ten. Of course I'm missing something. I'll just... I don't think I have enough room in my inventory. No. Chisel, go in there. Cardboard box, go in there. And chests. Don't tell me you don't have enough now, goddammit. Give. Now you're probably wondering why I'm wanting these. And I'm going to need... I'll just take nine dirt in this case. Uh, how much conduit do I have? Uh, 11? Should be enough. Now, surely you remember my essence berry bushes that I have up here. Now, I've been saving the berries for a very good reason. Of course, I forgot the activators. Why have I not just been doing that? So these are going to end up facing the wrong way. However, by default... Oh. I didn't realize I had that many plants. these all turned around. Now, if I put that there, set it to first slot only, now I have, come on now, I have green grove, which basically means that I'm getting a ton of things just output at me constantly when I'm standing here. So by putting this in the first slot, did I not bring enough? Eh, oh well. What this means, you know what, for the sake of getting things done, I'm just gonna take you. I'll fill you in later. This dirt here, first slot only. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to put these... Uh, I didn't bring enough conduit. That's okay. That's why I have the remote orderer. Somewhere. Now, I haven't obviously made any more item conduit because I don't know why I haven't. Probably because I haven't really been using it. But, uh... If I set you to insert, and yeah, that's what I thought, I'm going to have to set all of these to extract. Oops. Now, these are going to very quickly get full if I'm standing here, 
And the way the autonomous activators work, it's just going to spam me. But look how stupidly fast that goes up when I'm standing here. That kind of like rate of increase of the number of berries is that in there was only matched and really is only matched by the Darkcraft Time Torch. But uh, I have a use for these. And this might end, this end of uh, episode might end up getting long, but it's okay. It's for science. Now, there's this nifty little feature added to the sewer of Mine Factory Reloaded. And by feature, I mean, well, let's just uh, make one of each of these. I'm just requesting them at the moment. Whoops. There we go. The, uh, the interface wasn't quite updated. So, now if I were to throw these back in and request cool. Now you get four of them, but I don't need four of them. I need one. Uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put this at the moment. I suppose I'll put it... No. You, empty barrel. You are about to serve a purpose. I'm going to put the sewer here. The autonomous activator here. And I'm going to spin it around. Like so. And I'll just use a piece of limestone. And I'm going to put a fluid conduit here and set it to extract mode. Now watch what happens when I feed this some berries. That's right. Mob essence. And you actually get a really good bit per berry as well. Like, an unnecessary amount. So, I can use... And if I really cared, I could actually put Green Grove under the, uh, make a Green Grove ritual under these, so that they'll grow stupidly fast even when I'm not here. But, it's not even really necessary. So what I can do is I can put those in there, and two stacks will actually get me really far. And if I really want to, I could put another activator there and just have it spew it out twice as fast into here, but... I mean, it, this is fast enough. Look how much mob essence I have already. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the amount of mob essence per experience you get is drastically reduced in the future. But, hey, who knows? Maybe it won't be. Maybe that it's intentionally that strong. Did you move? Oh, 68 left, how are we doing? Oh, yeah. So this should be able to properly process anything I throw at it. Yeah, there's still a lot in there that's cutting through. It should, in theory, empty this tank first. Because it seems like it was selecting that one first whenever it was dumping into that one. And I'm really glad that the Mariculture stuff works as tanks with uh, Steve's factory manager. Because that makes this a lot better. And I'm really pleased with this. It gets me extra outputs, and then even extra, extra outputs. I mean, look at this. I got some clay, I got a piece of silicon. I'm happy with this. And this thing's almost done. So I might as well just wait for it and then break it down. But, uh... This episode might be getting a bit long. Not sure. My sense of time is terrible. So... Let's just go have a look-see at you. How far are you... Oh, you're done. Yeah, we got 110 mob essence from 128... Well, 110 buckets of mob essence from 128 uh, essence berries. Which means that uh, I've got a lot. 
I could actually support running... Uh, it's really weird, because the uh, altar that's over here has been doing a very good job of running itself. I haven't actually gone back over there, and I've been kind of going up and down and flying around and using the Phantom Bridge and the Magnet and all that, and it's just keeping itself full. So... I do plan to get the storage moved down into the actual level, the next level, but I need to make drastic rewrites to the code of this program, and I need to upgrade the computers to a Tier 2 case, but I need to get some cactus for that. I'm assuming I need to get cactus for that. Kind of disappoints me how you can't... Once you make other case, like, I wish you could just add a few components to upgrade it, like, I'd be fine if I could completely upgrade it by just adding a tier 2 microchip and 4 gold, but, eh, whatever, or at least a way to, like, melt it back down, ooh, I can use them to make robots, oh, I can melt it back down, if I choose to trust mine chem to not crash me and destroy itself it's a bit crashy and it can be a problem sometimes I'm also considering making uh... why why is there weird things huh I mean I can understand why you need the extra RAM but I just find that weird yeah, I actually hit a few out of memory errors. The easiest way for to do that was I was hitting them while editing the code. So I would just restart the computer and keep going. But, uh, yeah, it's, it'd be a pain. I could probably run them all off of one box with a Tier 3 server. Actually, I probably would only need this, but I I'm not quite sure how to deal with that, and that's just not worth it at the moment, I don't think. So I'm not going to bother. I'll just stick with making computer cases. Because it's not like they're hard. Or expensive. Although I am going to need to get some auto crafting set up at some point. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I might have to do that off camera because I desperately need it at this point. And, uh, by the time you see this video, it'll have been long past, but I actually recorded roughly so far almost a week of videos because I'm going to be playing Elder Scrolls Online. But that's me. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'm going to call this good here, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.